After last week's main event tag team match, you came out to the ring, and it seems as though you sided with Johnny Impact and Taya Valkyrie. What were your intentions in doing so? Seems like, seems like those are key words in your statement. You see, everything's just a matter of perspective, Mackenzie. And at this present time, you can just shut the hell up, my little friend. See, everybody wants me to spell it out, but the writing's on the wall. <laughs> he can't do this on his own. The whole world is against him. Is that a fact? Yes, it is a fact. Hello, John. It seems to me that a lot of things that come out of your mouth you claim are facts, but you're really just using them to manipulate people around you. Now, I don't understand what the point of that is. I don't get you, but I do see through you. So in case I haven't made myself clear, I don't want anything to do with you. Stay away from me. Stay away from my wife. You know, what a profound revelation, John. I'm glad we're getting things clear because you made it abundantly clear last week to me and the rest of the world that while you're out there trying to be the best Impact World Champion, you're also out there showcasing that you're a half-assed husband who can't put your... Oh, my God! Did you see that, John? That's the guy who can beat Cage. Stay away from me. Stay away from Taya. Sure, John. Whatever it takes. Now you listening to the cart, charisma, athleticism, and raw talent. And what you're really listening to is total non-stop impact. Don't you dare miss a lesson. Oh yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Total Nonstop Impact Impact Talk for Impact fans, brought to you by the Impact Lounge. This is Trent, and I am not joined by Kyle this week. No, I'm not. Screw Kyle. I haven't heard from him in days. The last thing he told me was a text message that said, Hey, Trent, long, tall blonde, legs from here to Cleveland. Talk to you later. I haven't heard from him in a week. I don't know where the fuck he is, but I got somebody better. I got somebody who's going to fucking analyze this shit with me. I don't, need, I don't need Kyle. I don't need Kyle's bullshit this week. I got... A guy who I've ridden a lot of miles with, who I've produced a lot of segments with. I got my friend, Brian Nelesny. Brian, say hello to the Impact Tribe. Hello, everybody in the Impact Tribe. This is Brian from uh, AEW, and I'm happy to be here. Trent, thanks for hitting me up and uh, to be on uh, Total Nonstop Impact. Thanks, man. Thanks for stepping in. For Kyle, did I mention Kyle's a fucking idiot and he's not here? I haven't heard from him in days. Yeah, so you, I, you, met, you were texting me all day about it. You're, I'm sitting there at work and just ping, ping, ping. He's a fucking <laughs> idiot. And then it was just one fucking idiot. One idiot. Constantly. Idiot. So, guys, a little background on Brian. He's a producer at AEW. He's been there for a long, long time. He's very familiar with the talent on Impact because pretty much, Brian, we have almost the same roster, would you say, at AEW? Uh, basically. <laughs> at, Minus about like maybe what like five people, pretty much, pretty much. And um, but yeah, Bri guys, Brian has done a lot. He's been with AW for how many years is it now, Brian? Total AW, I think it's been twelve or I think I started in oh seven. Oh seven. It's a long uh, time. It's a long damn time. And uh, but guys, he's seen it all. He's he's an Impact fan. He's watched since the early days too. So. We're, I'm definitely happy to have you here, Brian. Thanks for stepping in. So, guys, we're going to start it off with the YouTube comments. Read a few of those. Jump into the review. I'm going to get Brian's analysis on some of this stuff because he's very familiar with how this all works. Did I mention Kyle's a fuckhead? Did I mention Kyle's an idiot? Did I mention that already, Brian? No, you haven't. I don't think you have. it. Uh, how much of an idiot is he? He's a fucking moron. Kyle, you're an idiot. Screw okay. you, Kyle. I don't even know where you are. Like I said, the last thing I, last thing I heard from him was... Hey Trent, met a met a tall blonde, legs from here to Cleveland. That's that was it. That was four oh, days okay. ago. Wait, so he, he was in Cleveland? No, he was in New York. 
Okay. Said, She's got leg, legs from here to Cleveland. That's all okay, he said. I just want to make sure because I'm like, if he can get to Cleveland, then he can get to Nashville. That's true. He could get to Nashville. He's making a lot of excuses to not go to Nashville. He's asking me to start him a GoFundMe account, which Dude, I'm not going to do. I'm probably like more poor than he is, and I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going. By the way, yeah, guys, Brian is also going to homecoming with me. It's going to be me and Brian, uh, a couple of other buddies of ours. So we're all going down to homecoming. So even Brian's going to homecoming. I don't know, Brian. I think I think Kyle might be more broke than you. Kyle, Kyle was uh, he was he was uh, talking about go, starting to go fund me for lunch. I don't know. Oh, I don't know, oh, man. <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna read a few of the comments from last week's show. Brian, you might want to just if you want to chime in on a few of these, feel free. I'm just gonna read them off. We have some really awesome, uh, awesome fans of uh, listeners of the show, the Impact Tribe, as we call them. We appreciate the loungers coming in and and giving us their feedback. So I'm just gonna go and do this real quick, then we'll jump into the review. So uh, Richard Cartlidge says, I love Impact because it's an alternative to the E, because the X Division has had some of the most exciting matches over the last 16 years, and the women's division has always been the best in the world. Brian, what do you think? You, you've always been an X Division fan, right? Yeah. Um, the X Division has its, like, ups and downs. Yeah. Uh, but, True. like, i am I'm always been a fan of the X Division. Like, I just wish during, what was it, more during the Bischoff, and Hogan era where it kind of went down where yeah it was went down but then they tried to bring it back up yeah it's it's been on a rebuild since um so we'll see the ultimate x we're gonna see nashville's gonna should be a real cool kickoff to all that i popped when we were gonna get an ultimate x match yeah especially in person that is super cool uh Comment here from Critical Sting. He says, somebody needs to put out an APB for DJZ, which reads, missing, last seen everywhere but impact. (laughs) Very true. true. (laughs) Well, we're lucky to see him all the time, right, Brian, in AEW? We catch him constantly. Uh, New Heritage Champion. (laughs) All right, Critical Sting also said, people on the outside and looking in question impact getting a new TV deal. People do realize Ring Warriors and MLW have TV deals, right? If that's the case, it's only a matter of time. I agree. Brian, I, I'm the TV deal thing's kind of weird from what I understand. The last thing is they are going to stay on pop on a, I think it's a month-to-month or like a temporary extension. But uh, it, listen, let, me, let me get your opinion. You're, you're pretty in tune with tech and, and streaming and stuff. At this stage, a company like Impact, where they're at, you think they'd even do better on YouTube or, or Twitch at this point? Um. Like you would think it would be, but probably YouTube, maybe with Twitch, they're not promoting it as much. Right. Like they talking to like like Twitch was like, Oh yeah, we're gonna push forward with wrestling and stuff, but on their end, like Twitch will always, always be about video gaming first. Yeah. True. And they've been having subcategories, like they um with Amazon Prime, like on mm. Thursdays they have football. That gets huge but they push that outside outside of twitch true that's a good point that's a good point so maybe youtube live there's so much new stuff out there for people to watch or ways to watch who knows who knows where uh where they'll, where they'll end up i know they're negotiating we'll take a look next next year is going to really be telling all right just a couple more comments guys and we're going to get into the review c o'connor says can kyle do a top five for ways he's going to sabotage trent's relationship you're going to homecoming. Buy a ticket for Kyle. I'm broke. I will come with you. I'll mooch you off your snacks. You can buy me beers. We'll have a great time together. You're going to kill me because uh, just today, Kyle, I finalized my, my hotel for homecoming for Nashville, which I'll be going to. <laughs> oh, man. You know what? So that means I have – what? what is the date for homecoming again, Trent? January what? January 6th. you got under a month. To get your ass to Nashville. So you're saying I have under a month to try to sabotage your relationship with your girlfriend to get her out of the ticket, right? Jesus, I'm sure Kyle can come up with 10 ways he's going to sabotage my relationship. Did I mention that Kyle is a fucking idiot for not answering my goddamn text messages? Did I mention that already? Um, not for a while. Yeah, not for, he's a fucking idiot. Jesus, oh. Kyle, where the hell are you? I have no idea where you are. Thank you, Brian, for stepping in once I'm again. I'm going to write a note. Kyle <laughs> is a fucking idiot. Take that down. Take that. <laughs> um, 
Hey, you know, I want to put this out to the loungers, the Impact Tribe. Guys, put in your, in the comments for this show, put where you think Kyle is. Where do you think he's disappeared to for the last four or five days? I want to hear, I want to hear what people come up with. I'm really curious. We got some really witty people commenting on these on our videos on YouTube and, and the RSS feed on iTunes and whatnot. Let us know where you think Kyle is. I'm really curious what people come up with. Mm-hmm. All right. A few more comments here, guys. Let's see. Uh, we Our buddy, Whoopsie. Whoopsie's from Long Island. He lives, I think, down the street from Kyle. And he says, he said, I went to Vegas. So I was going to go anyways. But then they announced the dates. And I was con- able to convince the girlfriend for one romantic night of Impact Wrestling. Well, good for you, Whoopsie. Good job, bud. I hope you got some that night just for, for convincing her to go see Impact Wrestling in Vegas. And uh, Whoopsie also checked out uh, Hemi's album. He said he, his favorite song was Decay. Thanks, Whoopsie. I appreciate you checking that out. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Mir Neeson says, Trent deserves a raise. BQ. BQ is the owner of the Impact Lounge, the head honcho. You hear that, BQ? I deserve a raise. Not Kyle, because I'm here. I'm here. Jeff in the box says, I love this kind of review. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, what else we got here? McGuedro says, you guys got me because we m- named the McGuedro Dummy of the Week last week. We got you, McGuedro. Thanks for being a good sport about it. Stephen Carana says, listening to you guys all the way from the UK. Thanks, Stephen. I appreciate that. Jamal Francis says, great job. Continue winning me over. Love the chemistry between Kyle and Trent. And uh, what else we got here? God, we got a lot of comments last week, guys. Thank you so much. Asia, HSG Sabu says, Trent and Kyle kick ass every week. Thank you very much. And I'm going to read one long one. Brian, strap in for this one. All right. We, we got a guy named Dancing Mike. Dancing Mike is... A fantastic fan and listener. He likes to really write us some big old comments. So I'm going to read his, and then we're going to jump into that review. All right. Dancing Mike says, do you want to build a snowman? No. Do you want to, do you want to read a book? Well, here we go with some random comments. I'm back from Walt Disney World, and I caught up with your with, on Impact and your reviews. Oh, as always, great job, Kyle and Trent. Thank you very much. Yes, they do still make Totino's Pizza Rolls. They're so much better when you use a toaster, oven, or air fryer, which I think Kyle just got an air fryer for Christmas. I think his mom, his mom already ruined the present. The surprise. Brian, ever you ever used an air fryer? I'm really curious about using an air fryer. I've never used one. No, but really, that's what I want for Christmas. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? <laughs> I'm full on serious. I I've been like, like dropping hints. I'm like, mom, you should get me an air fryer. I know I'm not gonna get it. <laughs> <laughs> How does it work? I want it, I want one now too. Throw me in right? for an air fryer. Maybe we can buy each other an air fryer. Or we'll just combine <laughs> one and take it to Nashville. Deal. I'm down for that. To homecoming. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, he says he love, love, loves Raven. I still have my Raven t-shirt from ECW. That's an awesome shirt, by the way. I'm too old to have been in the grunge as a lifestyle, but I was more of a metalhead in the 80s. I'm a metalhead, too. Absolutely. And But the Raven character was always great. Dancing Mike also says Johnny Impact is still so terrible on the mic. I agree. Brian... You ever like Johnny on the mic? I never liked him on the mic, man. No, never. Never did. I, I he's always he's good for like one liners and stuff, but like when it comes on full on serious, it's like no. Yeah, my dancing Mike brings up a good point because they can keep writing good lines for him, and he'll keep he'll continue to completely waste them with his wooden delivery. Totally agree. Totally agree. Uh, he says, let's see. He says one of you mentioned liking the atmosphere and impact at Samstown. He says, Ring Warriors also comes from Sam's Town every week. I haven't watched Ring Warriors, have you? No, I haven't. You've heard about this? It's like some, I think it's on Amazon, I think. No, Amazon has that uh, Dojo Pro. Oh, that's right, that's right. I'm not really sure. I think Ring Warriors airs on um, uh, WGN America. I think that's what it uh, it airs on. So I'm not sure. I haven't checked it out yet, but I heard it they record in Sam's Town. That's what they're saying. All right. Man, Dancing Mike, you really wrote us a book here, but but you're a good guy, so I'm going to read them on. You were out for two weeks. So uh, he says, I've been watching Impact Wrestling ever since it started to air on TV. I think it started on Fox Sports before the 75 or so network changes. I also watched the first few months of weekly NWA TNA pay-per-views, but it got way too expensive to justify unless you're a Jeff Jarrett fan. Good point. Good point about that. And he says, I should. I think I should win the Impact's Miss Contest, by the way, guys. The Impact's Miss Contest. Kyle is gonna he's gonna splice in the uh, the um, uh, the rules of the contest. We're gonna be putting in here, so you're gonna hear him come out. He's not live. He's gonna splice that in. 
And it's a splice in the rules of our Impact Smith giveaway. So that'll be coming up in just a little bit. And uh, he says he should win because if he gets any more T-shirts, Mrs. Dancing Mike might totally lose her goddamn mind. By the way, she hates me because she finds herself saying dummy every time. And I bust out Eli Drake's yeah. And she actually said bah the other day, like follow bah when we were at Disney World. She not She's not a wrestling fan. She just picks it up by osmosis. Good job, Dancing Mike. I appreciate that. Good job converting your wife into a wrestling fan, too. All right. Uh, and one more, I got to say, HSG Sabu says he loves the Hemi songs he found on YouTube. Thank you very much, guys. And uh, I appreciate all, a lot of good comments. Guys, thank you so much. That's really cool of you guys to put that out there for us. We really appreciate you listening. All right, Brian, let's get into this review. All right, start it off. We are going to review the December 13th episode of Impact Wrestling that came to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada at the Samstown Casino. Lots of cool stuff going on in this one. They kicked it off hot. Two guys you and I know really well, Brian. Rich Swan and Dave Christ, Ultimate X qualifying match. On paper, what'd you think? Um, on paper? Just seeing it on I, paper. I think it was going to be a decent match. Yeah. Um, just because, like, in if you've been watching, like, OVE matches, Dave hasn't been doing a lot. Yeah, true. Uh, so Or Jake. So I knew it wasn't going to be like a standout, full-on great match. It w- it was a decent match, but it wasn't like you know a really big, spectacular opening match. True. Sure. Good point. Good point. Yeah, you're right. Dave hasn't been doing much lately. We, it's it's rare to see him in a singles match now, which is interesting. A uh, couple of highlights in the match. I know Don West immediately he was like, "Rich Swan's been teaching me some dance moves lately." Hilarious. I would love to see B-roll of that. Don Don Callis. I would love to see Don Callis dancing with Rich Swan. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But uh, uh, Rich Swan was doing a lot of the OVE thumbs down. He was just constantly thumbs downing him, kind of mocking Sammy the whole all the way through. But but Swan was going really intense on this one, Brian. I noticed he was a lot less playful, but a lot more intense. Uh, you know, like we've seen Swan for a long time. He was in AW before he had his run in WWE and stuff. Do you remember he wasn't like he was more intense before then he kind of got into like the more playful type of gimmick. I don't know. He's a good balance between the two. What do you think? I know he does a little bit of both on an AEW. What do you think? Yeah, he's a good mixture. I uh, back in like uh, Dragon Gate USA. He yeah. was, was more on the serious side because, of course, he was learning with the Dragon Gate guys. Right. Um, I think when he went to uh, New York, he. He started getting more of that. He was always charismatic, but he just kind of got more of that like party more into him. Even though he always came out to uh, all night long. Yeah, it's true. That was a, um, that was hot. I love so, how he came out to that. So New York really brought out the more playful uh, character side with them. Yeah, good point. So now he has a good diverse with it. Yeah, really good point. I noticed throughout this, uh, they're really playing up this mini draw thing with Sammy and Jake. Did you see that? Like, basically Jake's like mirroring everything Sammy's doing constantly. Yeah. Which is hilarious. Like they were doing like chanting on the outside. He was, and then I think Josh even pointed out, it's like, what the hell is Jake doing out there? <laughs> like, yeah, when they're slapping the rain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, that's the part I thought I'm thinking about. Exactly. And then Sammy stopped and Jake was going to keep going, but he's like, oh, oh, Sammy stopped. <laughs> I, got stopped. I don't know what it was with that. It was hilarious. But uh, cool, awesome win by Swan in this one. He did like some twisting schoolboy pin. Uh, it was it was interesting. It was interesting school, but I loved it. Uh, Rich Swan wins, beats Dave Chris, and Rich Swan is now qualified for the Ultimate X. So he is now the next entrant in the Ultimate X that we'll be seeing at Homecoming. But after that, Willie Mack attacked OVE, kind of payback from the week before, and uh, when they attacked him, and Swan stops Mack from fighting Sammy, and and Mack's like really confused. He's like, what, what, "Why are you stopping me?" And Swan's like, "No, no, no, chill, chill." And some of those backstage segments, you know, he was he was constantly trying to like back off Willie from Sammy. I'm not really sure what's brewing here. What do you what do you think? I mean, I can't really see Swan as a as a heel. Like, I, he doesn't have like especially now with the party gimmick. I can't really see him as a heel. I don't. You think they're they're going for it? What do you think? I don't know. Like, I maybe they're just gonna play back into the whole uh, Sammy and Swan's past because they're tight. They go together like lamb and tuna fish. Yeah, <laughs> spaghetti and meatballs, if you prefer. Uh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. 
they we we saw them. What was it two months ago for us at AEW? They had a match that was during uh during defining moment. Was it August? That or was during the Jim Lynham? Lynham tournament. Oh yeah, I'm thinking you're right. It was during the tournament Lynham tournament. But we just saw them had and they had a great match, man. These two had a really good match. So they can bring that to TV. I'm totally down. At, we'll see, but I don't know. I don't know where he's going with it. No idea. I like Willie Mack though. Willie Mack's the most athletic guy of that size I've ever seen. Super impressed by Willie Mack. You saw him live, right, Brian, at the uh, in New Orleans? Yeah, at the, during the uh, Impact Lucha Underground thing. Was that your first time seeing him live? I'm trying to, I think it was. Like, I'm trying to think if there was anything else during that weekend I saw him. Yeah, I think was, that's actually like the first time I saw him was during the Impact one. Yeah, he was good, man. I he he won me over during that show, and I'm I'm really into Willie Mack. And I saw him at, at Bound for Glory in New York. Super cool, super cool. Uh, all right. So lo- I noticed one thing: lots of excited kids in this crowd. For this particular crowd, a lot of kids yelling. I loved it. I love hearing when kids are super into it. Uh, they kick it back to an interview with Moose Mackenzie Mitchell's back there in her dress. Holy shit! Good lord, the dress that Mackenzie Mitchell had on. I don't know if you caught that, Brian, but it was. Ooh, baby. Oh, but I caught it. <laughs> <laughs> Moose had, a, had an awesome interview. He, Moose had a great line. He was really hyping up his match against Brian Cage later in the night. Awesome line in this. I loved it. He says, computers die, laptops die, electric cars die, machines die, but legends live forever. I love. I don't know why I loved it. For me, for, for Moose, that was pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm glad like seeing Moose get out of the whole baby face and yes. expanding to the heel because he was always just like so one dimensional. Now he's like branching out, which is great. Oh, totally. And we've seen him for a little bit. And I, I mean, I think the heel turn was the best thing that happened to him. I agree. I remember. I, you remember, everybody was so confused when he turned heel. Everybody's like, "Why is he turning heel?" But it was like best thing that happened to him. Totally. Totally. Uh, we can't get back from that to Willie and Rich Swan in the back. And and uh, Rich is trying to calm Willie down, saying, let's not go down that route. I know how Sammy can be. And Willie's, like, super confused. Again, no idea where they're going with this. I'm, like, totally up in the air on this one. But uh, we go back into the ring, knockout segment. Josh is ho- Josh Matthews is hosting it. He calls out Taya and, uh, and um, Tessa Blanchard. And just have a face-off, kind of hype up their match for Slammiversary. I mean, I'm sorry, Slammiversary. Homecoming, Jesus. Oh, I'm thinking about Slammiversary. We had a party at my house at Slam- for Slammiversary back. Uh, Brian was there. I was. was. fun. <laughs> I noticed, uh, Brian, Taya is so much more comfortable in this Weta Loka character that she's doing, better, rather than the Game of Thrones thing she was doing. Yeah, I, I like the epic entrance. But, like, for, like, TV, the epic entrance didn't always work. Like, yes. when she... Did she debut on TV or was it a pay-per-view? She debuted on TV. It was on Impact Impact TV. Because, like, okay, like a debut thing that works, like a pay-per-view that works, but, like, constantly over and over again. Yes. It it just doesn't work. Really good point. And if you're going to do it, like, you need so much more to go into it, like more lights, more everything to go into it. So, yeah, I agree. It, uh, it 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 would need a lot more for you to do it every week, but... Good, very good point about that. She's so much more comfortable in this character, so um, I like it. The crowd totally split on this one. Totally split. I noticed they were chanting Tessa, Taya, like everybody's just kind of. This is Vegas, though. So I don't know how Nashville is going to take it. Nashville might go either way. They might be split too. No idea. So we'll see on this. Um, a great line by uh, a great line by uh, Taya to Tessa. She's like. Taya goes to Tessa, she goes, this is not how a champion acts. And then Tessa goes, not how a champion acts. How would you know, Taya? I thought that was a great burn. Sick burn. Burn. Sick burn. This picture can also burn. Burn. Uh, Tessa's super intense. I just love how intense Tessa Blanchard is. I know we've we've had her once at AW, right? One time. Yeah, I think she teamed with, I don't know if it was, I think it was a tag team match. The match is actually on YouTube. On the AW page, but I think it's, uh, yeah, Jessica and Tessa versus Allison K and maybe Taylor Hunter. I don't know. It was like a tag team match. 
Okay, cool. And it was early. I remember talking to Ty, uh, to Tessa at Warrior Wrestling, and she was like, I was so not happy with my performance. I want to come back and do a better job. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to get her back, see her again. She's great. She's so intense. But what was announced for this one was Gail Kim will be the special guest referee at Homecoming. I kind of, Kyle and I called that one. We kind of mentioned that like weeks back. I felt like it was going that way, and we both, him and I both called it. Glad to see it's happening. I think it's a great way to get Gail involved. She still pops a crowd. She still looks like such a star. I'm a big Gail Kim fan. What do you like? You like Gail Kim? Uh, I like her in ring work. It's just like when it comes to like character and promo wise, it just, I just get like uh, too bland for me. Yeah. Okay. If, if you fans, if you don't like, well, you don't really know. It's the first time on here. I'm very picky with things. Very picky. Brian is very particular, guys. Like very particular. Tessa, uh, not Tessa. Taya's like entrance video with the spray paint. It's like you see the spray paint, but you see like multiple letters into it. I'm like, that's not how spray painting works. <laughs> it's Wait. green screen that like use green screen pr- spray paint and then threw it in there. Brian, we we got to run in here. We got to run in. Hold on, I, I'm getting what? a call. I'm getting a call here. Wait a minute. I, I'm getting the call. We got a run in. Kyle is calling me right now. What's up, Impact Lounge? Hey, where the fuck have you been? Ah, you know, I'm actually, uh, well, you know, I, I was working, but we took a quick little break or had a little detour right now. I'm calling you live from uh, Buffalo Wild Wings right here in Long Island. Hey, screw you. Okay, I got Brian with me here. Brian's on and, and covering your ass, by the yeah, way. Saving your ass. Oh, Brian, thank you, man. Filling in. Yeah, Welcome. Brian's. He says I, you're I would like your payday for this. Where uh, are we right now in the review? I'm he kind of just jumping in here quick. Wait, he wants he wants your payday for the for the day. He wants. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get some money out of Trent's PayPal account. He'll go over that with you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we we just went over the knockout segment. Talk about how Gail just got announced for the uh, as a special referee. Wait, wait, wait. By the way, uh, no, wait. wait. <laughs> Kyle, what, no, no, wait. Sorry about that, Trent. What, what were you saying? I was saying that we were last last text message you sent me was four days ago, and you said Trent with tall blonde legs from here to Cleveland, and then you had disappeared for five days. I don't know what happened to you. We're gonna get to the bottom of this next time we talk. But I, hey, Kyle, I got a review to do, man. Go go eat your Buffalo hey. Wild Wings. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I got I got beers coming, Trent. I'll talk to you later. See you later. Goodbye. <laughs> All right. God damn you, Kyle. Well, that was an interesting run in, Ryan. <laughs> Did you mention how much of a fucking idiot he is? Oh, he's going to hear it. When he hears this recording, he's going to hear it. Oh, I, I can't wait till he hears it back and then he gets shocked. So, uh, uh, so yeah. I, I, good, good point out on the, uh, on the screen. Guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preface. I'm going to put that back out there. The most detailed human being I know is Brian right here, guys. Because, Brian, what was the thing? We were at All In. And there was something you noticed on the screen, like the littlest thing. Oh, like the, the uh, LED ports, how crooked they were, and they were off-centered. Guys, no one would have caught it. Brian catches it. He's the most detailed guy. He is the asset you want on a team that does production for pro wrestling. He'll catch everything. So, yeah, good call on that tie screen, man. That was cool. All right, let's keep it going, Brian. We got next Ultimate X Qualifier for the final spot. Trevor Lee versus Trey Miguel, Ultimate X Qualifier. So let's. This is Trey's uh, actual solo debut on Impact. Now, part of the Rascals. Rascals have gotten really over with this crowd. People love it. It's the Fresh Prince of Midair. You like that nickname? I, I thought it, it no. was. I wasn't right when <laughs> right when he came out with it. I looked at you. I'm like, this is so stupid. Like, come <laughs> up with actually something new and original. Just taking the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, just putting mid air. I couldn't. I couldn't get into it. I love Trey though. I just couldn't get into the nickname. I wasn't a big fan of it. But uh, he looked fantastic. Trey came to play on this match. He was so into his performance. I loved it. I, I like. That. I always <laughs> thought Trey was great in the ring. It's just his character wise, and then it was too vanilla. Now, like he's with the Rascals and on Impact. Now, like you can see, he's like with Moose. Uh, who else did I say earlier? Moose Swan. Like you can see, they're branching out, which is good. Yes, you're right. Trey needed it because we've seen him before, and he had no. He, you didn't like what was the Fresh Prince of Midair? You know what are you like? Who who is Trey Miguel? And 
Yeah, you're right. With the Rascals now, he's finally finding that that groove, like who he is. He's part of this this group, and it's awesome. His match, this was fantastic. He was so intense. I just loved hearing like Don was speechless. Don Callis at sometimes was just like, "Oh come on!" Like he was so overwhelmed with how amazing Trey's like sequence was. I loved it, and uh, I thought it was really cool. I think he really, really took his moment. And he's like, this is my TV debut, my main actual TV debut. I'm really going to knock it out of the park. It was awesome. And uh, Trey won with the super Huracurana, which I loved. It was really cool, very smooth. Final participant in the Ultimate X qualifier, Brian. We're going to see it. Trey Miguel, yep. homecoming. I, I was I was glad he he's in it. Like, the only one in the Ultimate X, like, I'm just like, really? Was Ethan Page. Ethan like, Page, yes. Just, I would would have like when I looked at the paper and like, like kind of did my own fantasy pick. I'm just like, all right. So basically, three out of four is what I picked. It's like I would rather see Seidel because I want to see like a full on flippy like Ultimate X match. Like that's why I, I, I just I just want to see flips. I agree. I I, I was I was kind of shocked by Paige because flippy he's, shit. Yeah, flippy shit. But he, you know, it's like because right now, yeah, the participants we have now are Ethan Page. Rich Swan, Jake, Chris, Trey, Miguel, and Page is kind of the bigger one. He's kind of the heavier one. He's not known to be flying around, so I'm kind of like that one surprised me, man. I I don't know where they were going with that. He's kind of like I guess he'll be the base, like of of the some of the high flyers in that one. I'm not sure, but um, my money on that match, I'm gonna predict it right now. Kyle and I'll probably do a prediction show, and then I'm sure we'll do something. Maybe we'll, we'll maybe record a little something while we're down there, Brian. Uh, for this show, maybe like a little splicing, but I'm going with Rich Swan on on the win for this one. What do you think? Let's just call one out now. We'll uh, we'll see how we do when we come to Nashville. What do you who do you think is going to take this I, one? I'm, I was thinking Swan also, but if like my backup, maybe maybe uh, Jake. Like I w- I want to see like Trey get it, but I think it's too soon. To too strap soon. Him. Way yeah, too soon. I, I think so too. I think it's a little too soon for Trey, and plus. They got to build up the rascals a little more before they give one of them a belt. So, totally agree. Uh, we kick it back from that, guys, to the Lucha Brothers. They're hyping up their match with LAX. It's uh, translated subtitles. Still very intense. I love that camera work they do. That cool, um, that cool filter, Brian. You would probably know more about this, this kind of technical stuff. Is that a? Uh, that's like a post production type yeah, of filter, right? Post. Yeah. So they'll put like. Uh... They'll film it regular. They'll throw like a uh, wiggle or warp, whatever they do, and then like they'll throw the layer of the uh, the fonts on the side as like a mm-hmm. different layer. And when it comes to like anything like that, everything is just basically layer wise. So it's like top layer, change the color, top layer. Gotcha. Yeah, guys, Brian knows all that technical stuff. He's the guy. He's the man with all that stuff. Uh, so they hype up their match. We go from that to another. This is a little hype. This is a little hype cluster they went into here dark alley and sue young in the back dark alley looks possessed and she said this really really creep her voice sounds really different now too which is interesting but she just kept saying the end is the beginning the beginning is the end and then uh sue young just chimes in with you know, your time has come you know that was it it's kind of like a little little creep thing what what do you think of uh dark alley what it's i look kind of like it because like i I hate the whole bubbly shit. The bunny. Not a big fan of the bunny. Well, I'm not like I don't <laughs> care about the bu- it's it's the whole bubbly like Oh hi. Yeah. <laughs> like sometimes it's fine, like you know, Kylie Ray's all bubbly. It's I think the way Impact presented her is what I just didn't really like. Like with the whole Rosemary and Allie thing, it was fine. Yeah. And then but when it came to uh, I don't know. I'm just going all over the place right now in my head. Um, <laughs> You're fine. The You're whole fine. when she started doing the whole like Allie, the like Buffy the Vampire Slayer thing, and she's like, "My friends," and I'm just like, "No, please stop." It's like <laughs> just acting. Um, I'm kind of what? What did they call the dark dimension in this? Oh, the uh, the undead realm. The undead realm, like. Yeah. I like how they're exploring it more. I wish their uh, effects they used when Rosemary came back were better, but I would like to see more of it. Like even if they do like more like YouTube skits or like Twitch specials. Yeah. Or yeah, it's I wouldn't just mind. like undead universe. 
Yeah, I wouldn't mind like a like a mini series, right? The Undead Realm kind of like give us a little more something we could follow. That'd be kind of cool. Um, That'd be kind of cool. But Dark is Alley's it, cool. It gives her more dimension. I think she again another character like here's another layer on top of what you did before. You know? Yeah. Now I, is this the first time Sue Young ever talked in Impact? She did once before. This is the first time technically, but she she said the same line: "The your time has come." In that skit with uh, Madison Rain. Oh, with Say, the, when she had the axe or whatever. Yeah, with the, well, in the forest or whatever, she's like, "Your time has come," and then yeah, she attacked her. So it was, uh, but it's the same line. She's never spoken more than that. My big beef with the Sue Young thing right now is, I feel like they're not doing her justice. I know she's on the show, but like, man, when she was first on, they were giving her such a big entrance and the lights, and it's like. I feel like Sue Young is a sidebar to Allie and Rosemary. And I'm like, I don't, I feel like Sue should be a bigger part of it. She, she's awesome. She's oh, yeah. so awesome at what she does. Um, and I think she needs to be a, have a bigger role. They might be building up to it. I, we might be speaking prematurely because they had to get to Dark Alley. So now that like Dark Alley's here, it's like, okay, now let's get Sue to have a bigger role. Because ultimately it's leading to Sue, Rosemary... Then Allie in, in between the two kind of thing. So this could be cool. It could be cool. It just we gotta get we gotta get there. I mean, what well, we got three weeks till homecoming. I mean, we're not too far away. So we'll see. Do you think they'll pay it off at homecoming? Do you think they're building up to it? Or do you think they might even stretch this out longer? Or should they stretch it out longer? What do you say? Pardon me wants them to end it, but I know they're gonna stretch it out because like is Rose, Rose is Rosemary ever even like gonna actually come back like and wrestle full time or is she just kind of just stuck in the undead realm? I mean, from what I understand, she's coming back. You know, she should be. I don't. I mean, they, they, they've kept it close to the vest, so who knows really? But we'll see, man. We'll, I mean, they got three weeks to get there. I'll, I'll, I'm curious where they go. There's a, there's also the episode the week of uh, a week of homecoming, so that could be a real big go home. We'll take a look. Uh, they went from that, guys, to a GW on Flashback, another Ultimate X. It was the um, Motor City Machine Guns, Shelly and Sabin, Homicide, Daniels, Amazing Red, and Suicide. And this is the one that had that crazy, crazy sick fall where Suicide took Daniels over and kind of like a sunset uh, or like – I forget what that move's called, Brian. It's like he kind of like – they kind of like – he's they kind of face each other and do like a backflip. And he did it off the Ultimate X and it was like – it was ridiculous, and that that's when the one where Daniel it looked like Daniels broke his neck, but luckily he was okay. Available on the GWN app. But uh, we go from that, guys, to another segment here. This is a big block of uh, backstage stuff going on. Uh, LAX is with Conan, and Conan is super pissed still and about the whole thing about Phoenix and Pentagon taking on LAX. He's so pissed about this. He's not happy. And he tells Santana, you're on your own. I'm not going to be out there to back you up. And Santana and Ortiz aren't happy about it. And from that, we go to Santana versus Phoenix one-on-one match. So kind of a little preview, Brian, what we're going to see at homecoming. But um, right off the bat, I don't think I've seen Santana in a solo match before. Have you seen him on any other maybe pre-impact or anything like that? Have you seen him in any singles matches before? No. Like, if they did, I probably saw him, like, on an impact doing a singles match. But it's been, like, so long and just, like, consuming so much, like, wrestling. It's yeah. sometimes it gets blurry. Um, yeah, I can't remember if I've seen him in a, in a solo match. But, uh, but you know, he held up pretty good, man. This was a great match. This was a really good match. Ortiz came out with a flip-flop again, the chancla, as they call it. And um, I think this was his first sol- singles match on Impact, though, for sure. But... Um, Josh Matthews pointed out something really interesting during this match. Uh, And because it was so much high flying and a lot of, a lot of rope play and stuff, he pointed out that impact usually uses cables on their, on the ring, but in Vegas, they had ropes, which are harder. I thought that was a really interesting thing to point out. I noticed that too. Like, yeah, they pointed out. It's like WWE, they use regular ropes. Um, And majority of the time, like, uh, Impact uses the cable like when it was the six sides of uh, this um, six sided ring. It was mm-hmm. cable because you get the extra spring for the uh, high flyers to like stand and balance. Yep. 
um, with the ropes, you want to get that extra, like that more of that spring and more uh, steady stability. Like when you put your place your feet on there. Yep, good point. Good point. And they're thinner too, right? The ropes are slightly thinner than cables. Yeah, very. And I, I caught that. I was like, oh, it looks different. And then he, when he pointed it out, I was like, oh, interesting. I feel like the guys have better control on the ropes though too, um, in terms of like just. Uh, just kind of like ring ring control. I don't know. You're right, though. You get that extra spring for the high flyers. But uh, I felt these guys did a pretty good job with the ropes. But um, it was an intense match. They did a lot of reverse ranas. They were intense. A lot of falls to the head. It was pretty cool. Uh, this is basically a homecoming preview, and the crowd was super hot for it. Super, super hot for this. I, I think I think this is going to steal the show at homecoming, Brian. I really think it is. Uh Phoenix won. No finisher name given. As something Kyle and I rant about is they really need to brand their finishers. I know. I'm, 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 I'm going to ask you about this. Like too. when I listen to like your guys' podcast, like yeah, it when you guys mention that, I'm like 100 percent agreeing with you guys. Like, why not give like like mention the names and the moves? Like you're just like, oh, he hit him, cool. Like, yeah, like he hit him with the. Dutch oven five thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Phoenix's finisher is now known as the Dutch oven five thousand. <laughs> but no, right? I like that's what I'm saying. Like one thing I will always say, to, and I'm not a WWE fan, but the one thing I will say, they everybody knows what the moves are. That finisher is because they they bank on it so much, and they turn that into its own like thing. You know, people are so hooked on. The finishing move, the finishing move, and because they brand the shit out of it, they built like, up to it. Like, they even like I think they like I haven't watched like an actual like Ring of Honor thing in so long, but like the commentary, they're are, like Young Bucks. Are they building up? Well, no, because they use super kicks like all the time. But like HBK, he's like tuning up the band, and then he's I, like, is he gonna hit him with the three chin music? He's building it up, and, he, and you know, like he'll miss it. Everyone's like, ah, oh, and then bam, he hits it. Everyone goes, it's sweet chin music. Yeah, people go nuts. People love finishers. Rock bottom, Steve, Stone Cold, you know, stunners. I mean, people love finishers. Like, I think it would not take much for the the commentary and production team or whoever's in charge of, of getting this info to just come up with one or talk to the guys and say, hey, do you guys have a name for it that I can call out? Like, there's no reason Phoenix shouldn't get a name for that finisher. Like, why not? It doesn't hurt. Like, so, I remember they, I think one time they mention uh pentagon's uh driver the pentagon right. driver yeah yeah they call it the pentagon driver but like on the indies and everything he calls it uh fear factor right exactly but I, the reason why i think was because of like copyright reasons but like at least like one time they actually said hey pentagon driver right okay or you can call the zero fear factor that changes right there something i mean something where it's like it's got a name it's got something to it where people remember you know but uh, but yeah, Phoenix wins. That was a, a big win. Really interesting. What's going to happen at Homecoming? I was uh, I was thinking Santana was going to take this one because I I'm going with the Lucha Brothers taking the belts at oh, Homecoming. I'm totally with you. I I think they're going to take it. I think so. So I I'm surprised that that Santana didn't go over in this one. But hey, man, it if this matches any preview of what we're going to see, I can't wait. Can't wait for Homecoming. Uh, we kick it from that guys over to. Uh, Killer Cross and Johnny in the back. Cross is doing an, an interview, but uh, Johnny comes and interferes, and he he really Cross really riles up Johnny Impact, and he just very mysterious, still not giving an answer why he's he's doing what he's doing for Johnny, but uh, Johnny's just freaked out. He's just stay away from me. Just stay away from me and my wife. Just stay away from me. And Cross is kind of mysterious and evil. I, I've anybody who's listening to the show knows I love Killer Cross. Brian, I don't think I've ever talked to you about K- Killer Cross. Are you a fan, or what do you think? I'm a fan. Just I don't. He hasn't really had that too many matches in Impact. So like the ones I saw, it's just he's still kind of new. I think maybe yeah. I get like TV like jitters or something. But mm-hmm. like I love the character, like full on character wise. Yeah, um, the character's cool. I think the, from the first time he appeared, it, it, he sold me with the uh, when they revealed he was the one behind the cards, and he looked over the, his shoulder and he's like, "I think you should call the police." Like he hooked me from that. Like the character alone, it, like I'm into it. 
Like he plays it really well. Would you say right. he has the character down? Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, just, really... I would just like to see him in more matches or like, you know, if it's interferes, like actually more, no pun intended, impact with like <laughs> stuff. No, you can, you can intend the pun. So. Okay. The pun is now intended. <laughs> the pun is there, guys. Take the pun. Uh, cool. Yeah, we'll see. I, I Again, another build up. You're right. He's pretty new. We need more, right? We need to just keep building him more. But if character's on 100%. Let's get some more action out of him. So again, we'll see where they're going with it. Uh, they kick it over to Kira, and she has finally given up on Allie. She's realized, like, I can't save her. She's done. Can't do it. Cannot save Allie. Uh, so I'm thinking what we're going to get for the next couple of weeks is Kira and Allie until we get to Homecoming. I think Kira's going to be a perfect transition because she's kind of like the – the wild card in this whole thing, you know, kind of was Allie's friend, got turned on. There's money in the reunion down the line. Could be interesting, but for right now, Kira's going to be the nice the nice um, uh, opponent for Allie to go against until she gets to uh, to homecoming. So we'll see. Uh, Kira's pretty new, too. She's super young. I think she's like 22, 23. I never saw her before Impact. Did you ever hear about her before Impact? Um. I think if I did, it was probably when, uh, like, at a Shimmer show. Oh, okay. She was at Shimmer? Yeah. I don't know if she was, uh, like, it was, if it was before Impact or during Impact, but I remember seeing her at a uh, Shimmer show. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Uh, Impact announces at this point that they'll be back in Mexico for January 11th and 12th to tape the show. So they're going right back to front in Mexico. Tickets on sale. That was, uh, that was a fun... That was a fun uh, set of tapings they did a few months back. It, my only issue with that one, I wouldn't say issue, but the crowd was so far away from the ring on that one. Yeah. Right? It, like, it took, like, away from, like, yeah. Like, for me, it's just I couldn't really get into it as much because they're so far back. I was like, man, this is kind of a weird setup. So I, I hope that production, you and I are really, you know, we, we deal with this all the time where, like, ring placement is. Mm-hmm. We dealt with that a lot on AEW shows, but – Getting that ring, maybe they move it a little closer, you know, to that to that crowd block, that that bleacher block, wherever it is, just somewhere where like the crowd doesn't feel like they're so far away from the from the ring. I think they did it to center it with like the entrance and stuff. I would just you know get rent some chairs and make like a f- actual front row. Yeah, make a few rows and in, in before that, I agree. They might have had them, but I think they need a few more. Like bring down maybe. Forget some top bleachers, like bring them down to the front more or something, just to yeah. fill up that ring side. Tighten, but that'll be interesting. Tighten up on the camera. Yes, tighten up the camera. Just really close that shot in. It'll look it'll look cooler, I think. But uh, that'll be interesting. And uh, we go from that to Shady Acres, uh, the mental shady. institution. Good old Shady. Acres. Shady Acres is the place to be. <laughs> and Raven is playing a game of chess with the guy we know. Who was it? Was an inmate at Shady Acres, apparently, but uh, he was unnamed and on Impact. But we know him. And Brian, you want to tell the, the the crowd who that was? The Impact Lounge, who that was? That was CJ Esparza. That's a guy we know from AW from Chicago. He is one half of a tag team called Zero Gravity, but not much anymore. I think CJ is doing a lot of solo stuff lately. Yeah, I remember CJ when he first started. And his gimmick, the man whore, CJ Esparza. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I shit you not. He is a, uh, I can't picture him as a man whore. He's a, he's a very quiet little guy. <laughs> I wouldn't picture him <laughs> as a man That's why he was the man whore. <laughs> <laughs> but that was CJ Esparza. Didn't have any words, but Raven's like uh, playing chess against him. Checkmate. Then Eli Drake walks up and tells him, hey, your, your, your piss can is full. Go empty that out. And CJ's like, no oh. way. Eli just popped into the camera was perfect. Just, Eli? He's just yeah, yeah, he just just like out of frame then pop head in. So yeah. uh that was running cool. a little low right there. <laughs> that was pretty cool. No, that was awesome. Uh Eli is so money on the mic, man. This guy is incredible, as we know. You we have talked about like why can't we get him in Chicago? Like I would love for him to be in AEW, I've talked to Danny, Dan, Danny Daniels, AEW owner, about this. 
And he's like, who do I put him up against? I'm like, give him a microphone. Who gives a shit? That's all you right? got to do. Put him up against MJF. You oh, know? my God. Dude, I, I, we're eating tacos. I remember this. We were, we were, we're just talking. like, dude, it's money right there. Him and MJF could have a mic off and it would sell tickets. I'm serious. <laughs> but, I, I, I really, I would pay to just see the mic off. Oh, it'd be fantastic. But Eli talks to Raven and he talk about a hardcore. He basically shit talks hardcore wrestling and he says, you're responsible for it. But he said, tells Raven, well, I want you to watch me destroy Abyss. I want you to take a front row seat, buy a damn ticket to homecoming and watch me destroy him. And Raven's like, okay, all right. You know, whatever. <laughs> no, he was like, get the pay-per-view. He's like, we don't get pay-per-view here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, get the GWN app. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, That's you know, right. <laughs> You, you mean like the Fight TV app because GWN doesn't show? That was that's something I think uh, Impact should look into is actually streaming it off the GWN. I I agree, two hundred percent. They got to find a way to strengthen that app for streaming, make the money on, on their own. I think it's because Anthem has some kind of ownership in that Fight TV, Fight TV, or they have some kind of stake in fight tv or something i don't know there okay. i so, something i think that's why don't quote me on that but i think that was it but they gotta make it where like gwn's involved but that was cool that was a nice tie-in and a plug on, on that but uh i'm predicting raven shows up at homecoming what do you think yeah fitting I, right i mean i, I would he's... think they would just have like random run-ins like dreamer oh my raven. god Dude, I would wouldn't be shocked if like Blue Meanie and Stevie Richards showed up doing the <laughs> whole uh, what was I, it like EV 2.0 or whatever? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I would pop if like Raven runs out, Dreamer runs out, and then they have like a little bit of their feud like continues in twenty nine eight in twenty nineteen. They can stop. Uh, <laughs> well, I was just like, uh, yeah, you're friends with Tommy Dreamer, and then Raven is like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> Yeah. 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 His his like little mannerisms are so gold, man. Like Raven is such a freaking genius. Uh, like he's so good at that stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's one of those things where like if you know the history, you know you know like how awesome, that, how hilarious that is. But um, uh, so yeah, we'll see where we'll see where Raven ends up. But we go from that to a quick knockouts match. Jordan Grace taking on the debuting Ruby Rays who is Katarina's muscle. Uh, I'm a big fan of Katarina, Brian, I just got to say. I like uh, I like what I see. I like what I see. I'm a Katarina guy. I like the top of the mountain. The top they of are... the mountain. <laughs> I've seen the top of the mountains. So they are good. <laughs> no, I, I, I haven't seen those top of the mountain. Oh, I wish. I wish. But uh, Ruby Ray's a lot better than I thought she was going to be. Very intense. Very intense wrestler. And... Um, I, I like I, she wasn't bad. I not a big fan of the look because she's no, very I, much just, when I saw her like debut. I'm like, really? Well, I think she's she's got this like a she's got the bigger body style. It's like you, you don't I don't need more than like Jordan is a big power lifter. She's she's the power lifter woman, but like Ruby Ray is also a bigger girl. Like we don't they're too similar. Their body style is too similar. I mean, I yeah. if you're feuding them, that's fine. I don't think Ruby is signed. But yeah, this, I think she was probably just like a one off or something. Yeah, I just think, like, you already got Jordan, like, let's not confuse the situation. Jordan Grace looks, has that look down, let's go with her. But uh, Don made another comparison to Rhino, which two weeks ago he mentioned that Jordan Grace came up to him later on and said she didn't like being compared to Rhino. But he did it again. He did it again. And he's probably going to get yelled at again by Jordan Grace. Dude, I, don't just... <laughs> I don't think Don West gives a fuck, really. He's like, I'm the boss in charge. <laughs> yeah, Parent you to Rhino, but probably. like I, I like that comparison. Like it, it's not so like look wise. It's like build and aggressiveness. Like I can exactly. see, like I, what is it? Because I don't know if you know. Like I, I don't know if it's like a full on st like storyline, or if, like his contract was up and they just uh, kind of wrote it into there. Um, Rhino is done with like WWE. Like he's finishing up his like advertised dates, so if I wonder if Rhino would show up at Homecoming, that'd be super cool and super. kind of take her like underneath his wing or something. I would love take, it. Yeah, I would love it because you know Rhino's another tie into the old the old uh, T 
TNA days and stuff. I would, I want to see a lot of history come back on this one. The Rhino would be a perfect fit. I want like an old style entrance, like, like the entrance way, like the yeah, the entrance way. Like I want like the stripper cages. I want <laughs> the cage <laughs> dancers. <laughs> put put Scarlet in the stripper cage with like fog machine around it. You know, maybe have her drop in from the ceiling with the smoke and just have her go at it and call it a day. <laughs> we'll see, man. I got a feeling they're really gonna pull out some stops. I'm really excited for this. Oh man, gonna... I hope we'll be there live. Uh, we go from that to the Daisy Hit Squad. It is pronounced Daisy, not Desi. Josh Matthews. I got I got Kyle pronouncing it properly. I got a white kid from Long Island, New York, who had no idea what the word Daisy meant. Now he pronounces it properly and he's eating Pakistani food regularly, which is amazing. The Daisy Hit Squad. Is in the in the hotel and Scarlet shows up. Your pal Scarlet. Yes. Let's wait. We're gonna reveal something here, Brian. Oh, God. <laughs> we're gonna reveal it. I, right. This is huge. This is huge. This is big news for the Impact Tribe to hear right now. And I'm putting it out there, Get, ladies and gentlemen. The man who was responsible for Scarlet getting her foot in the wrestling door is Brian. You're welcome. You want to tell? You want to sidebar tell that real quick, Brian? All right, so super. You can you can summarize it super quick. Uh, was it? I, yeah, I was so like, I was working for AEW, of course. Like I still am, but um, we used to go to like this after party place. Um, when I, I was a fan, like I had like a little wrestling group I was with, and so I when I started working backstage, we would just um, meet up at the after party, uh. So one of the people in the group was uh, like brought Scarlet with, and she was just a fan. And then she just goes, "I I think I would like to do this." So I just go, "Hey PJ, get Danny. She wants to train." Dan Dan PJ was a referee, right? Yeah. Just people don't know. Um. But, so and it kind of just started snowballing from there. Like, uh, got her to come help. Uh, Set up slowly, starting setting up chairs and stuff, and then just you know her slowly getting trained, yada yada, and now she's uh on TV, and now she's the smoke show. She's the sm- dude. I mean, honestly, if anybody who's a big fan of Scarlet Bordeaux, thank Brian because he's the one who put that that thought out there and said, "Hey, this girl wants to train. Talk to her." That it was, was it. It was all joke. I'm just like, "Yo, oh, Danny, what? She wants the <laughs> she wants to train." I don't know if it was like the first show she was at. I think it was like after a couple. Like she she became part of like the wrestling family after like the first uh show she went to when we're all like chilling. I'm like, you're welcome to this group. That's awesome. See, there you go, guys. That that beautiful, stunning smoke show on TV is a result of Brian and AEW. <laughs> so you can think leave a comment. I want to hear from the Impact Tribe. Tell us how thankful you are to Brian for making that happen. <laughs> yeah, but uh, she, she did her. all her own work, so she, she did. responsible. No, she, did. she worked her ass off. We know that she is a hard working chick, man. And as a, you know her, you've known her for lo- way longer than I have, and she is very hard working. But no, definitely she's awesome. But uh, the Daisies are stuttering over her; they're losing their mind. Gamma singing; uh, they are they are losing their shit over her, and just can't keep keep their composure. And she tells them, you know what, guys? KM and follow are my number one before. Now they're not. So you guys want that spot? You got to fight them next week. So they see Hit Squad taking on KM and follow Ba. I love all four of these guys. I can't wait for that match. I'm super excited. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think you and I ever talked about KM or follow Ba. What do you think? Are you think they're fun? It's like it's like the fun guy, the two fun guys in the uh, on the roster. What do you think? As comedy, yes. In ring, no. Okay. Like I love the backstage stuff. Like oh, the, fantastic! Buh, buh, when they uh, <laughs> buh, 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 buh. <laughs> <laughs> now they're fan. They actually Cam and Fala just released a Christmas book that called Santa Claus. Santa Claus is coming to brawl, and he's bringing Cam and Fala. When uh, he's showing that we're at uh, Cracker Barrel. Was that a, was that there? At Cracker yeah, Barrel? we oh, got okay, the yeah. car and we're heading to the show. And oh, that's like, right. Oh, check this out. Yeah, and I think I'm going to buy it because <laughs> I just love those two guys. And I think it's really great that and they're so fitting that they would have a Christmas book. I think that's that's fantastic. Everybody support that. It's available everywhere. Barnes & Noble's got it too. Definitely support those two. They're great dudes. 
quick little plug for the GWN one night only special on 1221 going back to California. And now we are here for the main event. Brian Cage taking on Moose in the main event of this episode of Impact. I love the way Brian Cage enters the ring. He looks like a mercenary when he comes in. And that music's very mercenary-like. I love it. Uh, we've, we've seen him a bunch of times live at AW, so we're very familiar with Brian Cage. But I love the way Impact shoots him. You probably you can speak on this, Brian, because you're, you're good with this kind of technical stuff. He's not the tallest guy in person. He's not, but he's obviously he's gigantic. But he's not the tallest guy. But on TV, he's he's shot in such a way that he looks really imposing height wise. Yeah. Um, usually, if you shoot a little bit lower and angled up a bit, they, they seem way bigger than they are. Yeah, it was really it's really cool. They do a great job by Brian Cage on that. So I love. Who was it? Mil Muertes? Yes. When we saw him in person, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, he wasn't you tall. Think, you yeah. would think he would be like, he, like he's like huge, like buff wise and stuff, but you thought he would be like super ass tall. And you're just like, really? He's yeah. <laughs> he was like, what, 5'10? Right? Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't believe like, it. I'm like almost, I'm like 5'11, like 5'11, 6 feet. I mean, Mill Wurtz, this is also 5'10 wide because he's gigantically ripped. <laughs> so, is, so is Brian Cage. But but yeah, height-wise, dude, they, they shot in such a way. I thought he was I thought he was 6'6 six, six at least, but not that tall. But yeah, you're right. The way you shoot is very important. Uh, Don, Don Callis had a gr- hilarious line in this. He's like, Josh, Moose is a great athlete. He's a superior athlete, top top tier athlete josh is like you called him human garbage last week and he's like (laughs) on a a personal level he is i I popped dude i was like (laughs) but you called him human garbage last week on a personal level he is (laughs) um lots of technical commentary on this one a lot of back and it was a very intense match i gotta say i think they both brought out a lot out of each other and these two could have a really good feud because this was a very very good match and and i love that don and josh did a lot of technical commentary. They talked a lot about moves, pain points, descriptions, a very descriptive commentary, which I like. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm a big fan of that stuff. Yeah, just break it down. Just give us that extra level because Especially that's for a main there. event. Like, yes. Usually when it comes main event time for like TV, I'm just like, yeah, I'm. Uh, if it doesn't like build up and sell me, I'm just like, yeah, I don't care. Yeah, exactly. I think main events got to be built up with that strong technical commentary and like made to feel way more important. Well, I love that. It was, it was a great part about it. But uh, I noticed at one point Cage was um, power bombing Moose and his knee buckled, but he still pulled it off. But that was a little scary for a second. I was kind of like, oh, shit. I thought he was going to like screw his knee up before the main event at homecoming. And I was like, oh, shit. But um, great. The, <laughs> Eddie Edwards comes out and attacks Moose. And he attacks him while wearing a hospital gown, which I at least he had pants on, not yes. like full on. I it think that would have been funnier if he was commando. <laughs> yeah, commando. <laughs> but like, yeah, at least he had pants on. The visual of Eddie diving onto Moose with a hospital gown barefoot was just hilarious. There's like a great photo somebody took of it. And I'm like, this is just hilarious. Like, this is wrestling. <laughs> I don't know. Dude escaping from a mental asylum. <laughs> Attacking somebody in a hospital gown. But uh, he beat the crap out of Moose. I don't know where, like, Cage kind of slinked out of that. I don't know where he went. And I kind of was, like, a little upset that Cage didn't, like. Oh, like how he just, like, powdered out and kind of, like, yeah. went to the side and stuff. Yeah, yeah, because then it was, like, then it, the focus became on Eddie attacking Moose. And I get it was a DQ finish. But, um. I don't know, like, I feel like Cage is your main event guy. Like, he should at least have had a last visual, maybe at the entrance way or or something. And, you know, like, you know, what the fuck, man? Yeah. Look at yeah, it. Something. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, something like that. But, uh, but you know, we'll see. I mean, I, I know. And then they set up, you know, Eddie versus Moose for homecoming now in a, uh, I think it's a street fight. So I, I get it. I get why they did it. I just want Cage to get a last visual. I mean, he is your top main event. So definitely visualize that. But, guys, that was. The that was the episode right there. That was the that was the December thirteenth edition of Impact Wrestling, Impact on Pop. Uh, Brian, what'd you say, man? I, I thought it was a fun episode. I thought it got it got everything further towards Homecoming. Yeah, I I just because you know the next two was it like isn't like the next like 
show actually just Homecoming? I think so because the next were they saying next week like was the just best the of like the next yeah. two are the best ofs. You got the next two are best ofs, and I think so. The only actual show is going to be the Thursday show before Homecoming because um okay so like we, the go they filmed home okay because I'm like if this is like the last one before Homecoming, I wish they would have done more. But if they have like another episode beforehand, then that's good. Yeah, because you got this week's the twentieth, and you're gonna have a a, re- a best of. Then you have the twenty seventh. I'm not sure what they're gonna do on that week, but then you have the episode on the third, and that's the big go home show. So that one they really got to kick it up and make sure everything's set to go. So we'll see where they where they head up with that. But uh, that you know, very exciting episode. I think I think it's cool. Everything got progressed. I work, like you said, we need one more for sure to push it through. No question about it. But guys, that was the episode and. We appreciate you listening with us. We appreciate you guys enjoying us, enjoying the episode alongside us. Thank you to Brian for for jumping in. Brian, thanks for tagging in today. No that was problem. Awesome. Thanks for hitting me up and being like, "Yo, you, can you fill in?" Because uh, Kyle's a fucking idiot. I'm like, a fucking sure. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you want to tell people where they can find you online if uh, if they like what you got to say. I know you do Twitch as well. You want to like tell put the word out there, but let some of the impact the impact tribe get a hold of you. Um, yeah, uh, on Twitter, it's at Skull17. Uh, Instagram, it's at XSkull17X. Uh, Facebook is uh, Skull17. YouTube is XSkull17X, which I haven't posted anything on YouTube in, like, years. Yeah. Uh, it's, like, old, very old Halo gameplay. Um, and then uh, I have to, like, reboot my website, but uh, Skull17.com. And on Twitch, it's just Skull17. There you go, guys. Follow Brian and all that stuff. He's awesome. He's a game guy. He's a wrestling guy. He's a technical production guy. Anything you need, you can get it from Brian. Trust me. I rely on him a lot for, for questions. I, I didn't even know how to load in a PS4 game. Remember that, Brian? I couldn't oh figure out how to do with a PS4 game. I was like, why why is it loading? What is it What is it installing? I don't understand what's going on. But you called me a noob and told, told me I'm a little an idiot and a stupid noob shit and don't know what I'm doing and I should throw my PS4 away, but it's okay. It's okay. I still got through it, but guys, Brian's awesome. Give him a follow and you can follow this show on, uh, Apple iTunes, Google play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, TuneIn radio, iHeartRadio, radio, Spotify, and YouTube. Follow us on all those feeds, like, like review, subscribe. Let us know what you think. Give us all your feedback. You can get a hold of this show on Twitter and Instagram at We Talk Impact. Type in We Talk Impact and Facebook, sorry. Type in We Talk Impact and, and the Total Nonstop Impact podcast will come right up. Follow us there, interact with us. Be sure to keep an eye out for more details on the Impact Smith uh, merchandise giveaway. Kyle's going to put some more out there about that. The trailer should be up on the Twitter about details on that. You can follow me personally at Vanilla Joke on Instagram and Twitter. Get a hold of us. You can follow Hemi, who is the song, the intro song to this podcast. It's called Revengeance. Follow Hemi at hemimusic.com. Brian, is there anything I'm missing? Am I good? Do I did I cover everything? I, I think you're pretty much good. Um I think you just need to mention Kyle's is a fucking idiot one last time. Kyle, you are an idiot. See you guys next week. Thanks for listening. Ho ho ho, impact wrestling fans. Let me talk to ya. Let me talk to ya. This is Kyle from Total Nonstop Impact, Impact Talk for Impact fans, the weekly Impact Wrestling Review Show on the Impact Lounge YouTube channel. I come to you folks today to tell you all about our Impactsmas giveaway. That's right. It's our first annual Christmas Impactsmas giveaway. What we are doing, folks, is we want to hear from all the Impact fans Hit us up on Twitter at We Talk Impact or go to one of our latest videos on YouTube on the Impact Lounge and in the comments, tell us why you love Impact Wrestling and why we should choose you. Forget Don West this year, folks, because this Christmas, Kyle and Trent are going to be the brown bagsmen. We are going to send you a plethora of Impact goodies right off of shopimpact.com. You don't know what you're going to get. It's going to be a surprise. So one more time, hit us up on We Talk Impact on Twitter. 
or go on the Impact Lounge YouTube channel, get in the comments and tell us why you love Impact Wrestling and why we should choose you. One lucky winner will be picked on December 25th. So folks, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays and keep supporting Impact Wrestling. It's a celebration tonight! Yeah!